Our 5.9-liter Cummins intercooled turbo diesels increased horsepower of 175 and best-in-class rating of 420 pounds-feet of torque with manual transmission means sure, efficient power when it's needed. What makes the Cummins diesel so efficient? Simplicity. The Cummins intercooled diesel does not require a carburetor, glow, or spark plugs, or distributor to function. It also has up to 40% fewer parts than regular gas engines. Diesel engines also don't require an electric spark to cause combustion. Instead, compression-generated temperature inside the combustion chamber creates the required combustion for greater fuel efficiency. The Cummins diesel is almost twice as fuel efficient as a gasoline engine at full throttle. With turbocharged diesels, the exhaust side of the turbo acts like a fan feeding a fire, helping the intake side of the turbo force more air into the intake and combustion chamber. The result is increased power, up to double the power of naturally aspirated engines of similar displacement. But turbocharging is only half of this engine's power story. By utilizing an intercooler in addition to the turbo, the Cummins diesel can produce even more power without sacrificing durability or efficiency. The intercooler actually helps the turbo force more air into the intake for improved combustion by lowering the air temperature on the intake side. In addition, the intercooler helps to lower the overall operating temperature of the engine, which in turn reduces heat stress on the engine's parts. So for all your customers who need towing power, fuel economy, lower operating costs, and the ability to carry big payloads, the Cummins intercooled turbo diesel can be the answer. The short presentation on the Cummins turbo diesel engine that you're about to see was originally produced by CDN for service technicians. The information it provides is quite detailed, probably more than many customers would care to know about. So in addition to this technical presentation for our service-oriented audience, we've distilled some of the tech out for salespeople so that they can easily translate certain features into customer benefits on the sales floor. While the Cummins turbo diesel was already an outstanding pickup truck engine, you'll learn how it's been improved for 1994. And I'll be back throughout this program to summarize the most important points for you so that you can address all types of customer questions. Compared to 1993 models, the 94 version provides added horsepower and torque when used with a manual transmission. It has improved throttle response and low-end torque for better drivability. Fuel economy has been improved. A wastegate has been added to the turbocharger unit to help ensure a long life. And emissions have been reduced to help protect the environment. And those are the benefits for 1994. Now watch this presentation of the Cummins Turbo Diesel technical highlights to learn how they're accomplished. Buy-in production of the exciting new 1994 Dodge Ram pickup begins this month. This pickup is new and different, not only in its dramatic appearance, but also in many of its features. That's why proper service training is so important. Let's look at some of what's covered in the training on the new Ram pickup's Cummins Turbo Diesel engine. There have been a number of improvements for 1994, especially to the fuel system. A larger fuel filter and water separator accommodates the new injection system's higher fuel flow rate. The filter unit is located between the lift pump and the high pressure pump. A water drain and electronic water sensor are carryover from 1993. This assembly is also mounted further to the rear of the engine. The fuel heater and a new pre-filter are also used on the 1994 engine. The temperature of the fuel is monitored by a sensor in the fuel heater pre-filter assembly. If the fuel temperature drops below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, the sensor contact closes and the fuel heater is activated to prevent the fuel from waxing. The pre-filter also removes impurities that are 140 microns and larger. The benefit to your customers of the fuel filters and water separator is that they remove impurities from the fuel that could otherwise cause damage to the fuel injection system. And the fuel heater? Well, at extremely low temperatures, the paraffins in diesel fuel can start to solidify and obstruct the flow. The fuel heater keeps the fuel warm to help ensure that it flows freely in cold weather. And by the way, Chrysler has special diesel fuel recommendations if the vehicle will be operated in extreme cold conditions, below zero degrees Fahrenheit. Be sure to point them out in the owner's manual to your customers if you live in a climate where winter brings those cold temperatures. All right, now let's find out how the high pressure fuel injection system works to ensure complete combustion. Also notice the location of the external priming plunger. 
your customer should know about it because if they ever run out of fuel, it'll make it easier to restart the engine. The lift pump supplies fuel to the high pressure pump at approximately 21 PSI to ensure that the high pressure pump is always full. An external priming plunger aids in restarting after repairs or if the vehicle runs out of fuel. This button type plunger replaces the lever used for priming on previous engines. A Bosch inline fuel pump replaces the distributor type rotary pump used previously. The inline pump builds the high injection pressures required for combustion and routes the fuel through equal length individual high pressure fuel lines to each injector. The fuel lines are new and have greater strength and rigidity and larger tube nuts to handle the higher pressure created by the inline fuel pump. The injector nozzles spray atomized fuel into the cylinders in the correct firing order sequence. The higher pressure produces finer droplets, which burn more completely to reduce particulate emissions. Pressures in this part of the fuel system can reach 17,000 PSI, so take extreme care when working on or near the fuel system when the engine is running. The inline fuel pump is driven off a new fuel pump drive gear that has no timing marks nor is it key to the fuel pump shaft. A new injection timing procedure may be required if the inline fuel injection pump is ever removed or replaced. Refer to the service manual for more information. If you've only sold cars or trucks with gasoline engines, you may be unfamiliar with some of the subjects we're covering. But there are also elements of the Cummins diesel that are similar to gasoline engines. For example, you can point out to customers that the Cummins engine uses roller followers to reduce internal friction and thus improve fuel economy. Individual plungers for each injector are operated by a camshaft through roller followers. The cam and followers are lubricated by crankcase oil for durability. Injection timing and fuel quantity is controlled by the throttle position and is modified by a centrifugal governor moving a gear rack in the high pressure pump. The rack rotates sleeves with variable width slots, concentric with the pump plungers. The location and height of the slot exposed to incoming fuel corresponds to the start and duration of injection. The slot is closed completely by a new electric fuel shutdown solenoid on the outside of the pump when the engine is shut off. The fuel pump limit on wide open throttle idle speed has been raised to 3,000 RPM for improved drivability. The new control also makes the high-speed fuel cutoff more gradual. A fuel drain manifold routes leakage from the injectors to the inlet side of the fuel filter head. The inline fuel pump has a fuel return line that carries a significant volume of fuel back to the supply tank. This serves to cool the inline pump by transferring heat to the fuel. A certain amount of leakage is almost unavoidable when dealing with diesel fuel injectors. The benefit of the fuel drain manifold is that it routes the leaked fuel back to the fuel filter, so almost none is wasted. The fuel return line, which sends excess fuel from the filter back to the tank, also serves another purpose. The returning fuel cools the inline pump to improve its reliability and help ensure a long life. Since the 1994 Cummins turbo diesel fuel system has changed quite a bit, Let's review how the fuel flows through these components. A high volume plunger type fuel transfer pump or lift pump draws fuel from the tank and through the fuel heater and pre-filter. This pump maintains approximately a 21 PSI pressure. Fuel then flows to a new larger fuel filter water separator. A sensor in the bowl activates the water in fuel warning lamp through the PCM if water is trapped by the filter. Explain to your first time diesel customers that almost all diesel fuel contains some moisture or water. The benefit of the fuel filter water separator is that it traps the water and other impurities before they can damage the pump or injectors. Also point out to new diesel customers that they'll need to drain the fuel filter water separator on a regular basis. The fuel enters the Bosch inline fuel injection pump, which pressurizes the fuel up to 17,000 PSI. A Bosch governor in the inline fuel pump contains an air fuel control that is activated by turbocharger boost. The inline fuel pump meters and distributes the high pressure fuel to the injectors. The pump has a separate pumping element for each engine cylinder. A new fuel shutdown solenoid cuts fuel to the inline fuel pump when the ignition key is turned off. 
Note that the powertrain control module, or PCM, does not control any part of the fuel system other than the intake manifold heater element. This is quite unlike gasoline engines, of course, where the computer known as the powertrain control module controls airflow, fuel flow, ignition, and many other aspects of combustion. But the Cummins diesel is much simpler than gasoline engines, a fact many customers will appreciate. Two new relays located near the brake master cylinder are the fuel heater relay and the fuel shutdown solenoid relay. As with the gasoline engine on the Stealth RT Turbo, the Cummins diesel engine is turbocharged to pack more fuel and air into the cylinders for more power. The turbo helps the Cummins become the outstanding workhorse that it is. For 1994, the Cummins turbocharger has been improved. Listen closely and you'll discover that the alterations to the Cummins turbocharger produce the same types of benefits as they would with a gasoline engine. Quicker response, more low speed torque, and a longer life. Throttle response and low speed torque are improved with a new wastegate on the turbocharger. Low speed torque and throttle response are improved through the use of a smaller turbine wheel and nozzle which reach peak boost more quickly and at a lower engine speed. The wastegate is actuated by the intake manifold pressure working against a spring-loaded diaphragm. High altitude performance is unaffected by the wastegate. A catalytic converter will be added mid-year to reduce exhaust particulates. Unlike gas engine converters, the diesel converter is an oxidation device that removes smoke particulates. It reduces emissions about 30%. Dodge expects to put even more Cummins turbo diesels on the road in 1994. So it's important that you be familiar with this and many other new features found on the Cummins turbo diesel. The Cummins turbo diesel, the preeminent diesel engine in the pickup market, continues in 1994 with a number of performance improvements. The 5.9 liter inline six cylinder engine features the same quality engineering that went into designing and manufacturing the famous Cummins highway tractor trailer engine, such as the use of a turbocharger. A turbocharger is designed to increase engine power by forcing compressed air into each combustion chamber. With an increased amount of oxygen to burn, combustion is more powerful. The compressed air is delivered to the engine by a small turbine wheel that's powered by the engine's exhaust gases. The end result is improved performance and increased engine torque for greater pulling power overall. This year, the Cummins turbocharger features a smaller turbine wheel and nozzle. The lighter wheel is able to reach its operating speed more quickly and at lower engine speeds. As a result, peak boost is reached more quickly and performance improves. A wastegate has also been added. If the turbine wheel is spinning too rapidly, the wastegate opens temporarily to allow exhaust gas to bypass the turbine. This helps extend the life of the unit while improving throttle response and low speed torque. In addition to the improved turbocharger, the Cummins engine uses a direct injection system to improve fuel efficiency. A new high pressure inline fuel injection pump produces smaller droplets to ensure more complete combustion. A new larger intercooler and wider ducting are used this year to reduce the restriction of intake airflow. This also helps produce more power, reduce emissions, and provide cleaner operation without affecting the engine's performance. A central intake manifold air heater with a new, more efficient element provides quicker starts at cooler temperatures. Thanks to the turbocharger and intercooler improvement, when combined with a five-speed manual overdrive transmission, this year's Cummins engine provides over 9% more horsepower and 5% more torque than last year. With manual transmission, the Cummins engine provides 175 horsepower and 420 pounds-feet of torque. With automatic transmissions, it provides 160 horsepower and 400 pounds-feet of torque. Other Cummins improvements are designed to simplify and reduce maintenance. For example, new piston ring materials and their construction reduce oil consumption. Because diesel engines consume much more air than gasoline engines, a clean air filter is even more important to diesel engine performance. That's why the Cummins engine includes a filter minder that measures airflow restriction and makes it easy to see when the filter element needs to be replaced. 